Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to be going over the configuration page on your Pingento installation. And this configuration page houses most of the configuration settings that you'll need for your entire site. So if you'll notice, it starts off on General, and um, General has your country options. Uh, these are the countries you want to allow. Um, if you want to only allow certain countries, you can just click, click, click. Uh, this, these kind of lists in Magento, anytime you see anything like this, they want you to shift click to save it. So uh, we're actually only going to allow United States because uh, I don't have to deal with shipping to other states. So, okay, we'll select that and okay, we'll click save config. Uh, as you'll notice here, each of these things are sort of like an accordion, so you can actually go through each of these before you click Save Config. It's no, it's no big deal. This is States Options. Uh, states required for, and then any of these countries. Since I already already selected, uh, the only country we're going to be allowing is the United States. It doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, locale Options. So we want uh, the weekdays, uh, the weekend days, to be Sunday and Saturday. We want the first day of the week to be Sunday. This is all pretty normal stuff, but you can change it if you want. Change to your time zone uh, and our store information. So here we can give ourselves a store name. Let's call this, um, let's just call this a uh, test store. Of course, you can call this anything you want. Uh, the contact phone number, I'm going to put in just a, a spam phone number there, but we can have something in here. Uh, please select country. Okay, and you you can have your contact address here. Okay, we'll click save. This is where it's going to pull some of this information. If you are using um, like the email templates, it's going to grab that. Okay, you'll get this notification. The con uh, configuration has been saved. So let's go to web here. Next up, and URL options. So uh, add store code to your. It says okay. When using store codes and URLs, in some cases, the system may not work properly. URLs, okay, so I'm just going to leave this checked to no. Uh, auto redirect uh, to base URL. Yep, okay. And server engines optimization. Uh, no, we're not using server rewrites. Unsecure. So this is basically your base URL, unsecure base URL, unsecure skin me okay so you can change any of these things and then you can go ahead and change these folder names but i honestly would not recommend it um it's as saying when you're using a cdn javascript may not run properly um but that's not really something you'd have to worry about unless of course you were using a cdn insecure this is if you have an ssl installed i don't have an ssl installed but if i did i would just type in https here that way your uh, base url would be secure uh, and if Magento uses that HTTPS anytime you're making a checkout, it won't run it on any of the other pages, so you don't have to worry about your page speed being affected by the um, SSL you know, certificate doing its thing. So default pages, default web URL, CMS, okay. None of this stuff you really need to change unless you want to. Uh, polls, disallow voting uh, in a multiple times from the same IP address. Yeah, no, you can do that if you want. Like I said, none of this stuff really matters unless you want to change it. It's basically all set up to be um, just the just the defaults. And I would recommend just sort of pawing through all these menus. And a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory if you read these and see what it says. Design, this is where you're going to change your template or your theme. Um, so our default package name, default themes. So now if we had a theme folder, we would have write in our different theme folder in here. So this allows you to use different templates, uh, skins or layouts or anything like that. Um, you don't have to, you can use di uh, different layouts or different CSS with default layouts or whatever. Let's say you just want to use images and CSS, you can type in whatever the name of your theme is in here and it should work just fine. This is the uh, information that's going to be in your HTML head. You can upload your favicon here. Uh, your default title, um, default description, keywords. These are just going to be things that are in your head in your uh, website. So here's header. This points to the uh, location where the logo image is. If you wanted to change this to be something that's not this logo.gif like a, or gif, however you pronounce it, or you want it to be a PNG, whatever, you can type that in there. Uh, logo image alt, welcome text, 
uh, default welcome message. Let's change that. Uh, welcome to test store. Okay, just so it's not you know the default. This is your footer and contains the copyright. You could put some miscellaneous HTML in here. Maybe you want to put like a script tag or something. Uh, image watermarks. You can upload an image watermark that would uh, watermark your images for you. Pagination. You could say uh, how many links to display at once. Leave it at five. And in your transaction emails, this is the image that's going to be used in the emails that's sent out. You want to want to have. Um, you know, if you have like a specific email you want to use for your email template, this is where you do it. Currency setup. Uh, base currency US dollar. We sort of already, you know, went over some of this stuff. You don't need to change this unless uh, you need to have a different, uh, you know, base currency. I, if we've already set this up, you don't need to really touch it. This is where you're going to set up your store email addresses. Uh, you know, here is your general contact. You can change the uh, sender name. And this is general contact email, sales email, uh, customer support email, and chances are these could all be the same thing. Um, so you could probably put all these as the exact same thing. Um, or if your store is more complex than that and you have different needs to send out different emails to all these different people, then of course you can have that set up the way you want. Contacts, this is where you're going to say, you know, you want to contact us? Sure. Okay, send emails to uh, using which one of these email senders you've already come up using uh, this email template. If you were to create an email template under your system uh, transactional emails, it would show up here. Uh, reports. This is just going to ask when you, you know, some information about configuring your reports, content management, your WYSIWYG options. Uh, is it enabled by default? Yeah. And use static URLs? No. Okay. So yeah, we want our users to be able to use a WYSIWYG when they're editing their CMS pages. Okay, even more. So this just keeps going here. Like I said, if you can pot through this stuff, uh, you know, we're gonna go over some of these things in more detail. So catalog, uh, you can just sort of set up if you want recently, um, recently viewed compared products, product alerts, uh, allow guests to write reviews, yes, no. Uh, basically, if you go through any of these things, there is tons of options. So, uh, if you want to have a Google sitemap, you know, you could say how long it uh, regenerates daily, whatever, generation settings enabled. Uh, I don't want a Google sitemap because this is just locally, but you're going to want to if you want people to, you know, have your site indexed really well and everything. Some of your inventory options, your stock options. Um, your newsletter options, customer configuration. So some of the stuff that's really important is uh, the payment methods, like PayPal, let's say you want to set that up, or your checkout process, your tax stuff. This is all really important once you're setting up all this. We'll go over how to set up tax classes, how to configure your PayPal, or if you want to use Google, Google Carts or anything like that, we can show you how to do that. Um, if you go to payment services here, you'll notice, actually, I'm sorry, if you go to payment methods here, you'll notice there's all sorts of stuff. You can use authorize.net, um, check or money order, PayPal, and it's all pretty easy. Of course, we'll go over that in a second. In advanced admin stuff, you could enable CAPTCHA for admin, um, enable charts on the dashboard. Uh, like I said, all sorts of stuff. So my recommendation to you would be to just come in here, go to configuration, and just click through all of these. There's a ton of stuff in here, and chances are, if you're looking for a setting on your site, it's going to be in system configuration. Okay, well that is the configuration menu. If you want a more detailed walkthrough or anything, or you have any more questions, feel free to just leave a comment on the video, and we'll try to get to whatever you're going to, um, whatever you suggest or are having problems with or anything. So in the next couple of tutorials, we're going to go over creating products, creating categories, uh, creating attributes, and then we'll eventually after that go through the whole uh, purchasing process and then we can set up our tax, our shipping, and all that cool stuff and your site will be ready to go. Okay, once again this is Scott with Level Up Tuts and thanks for watching. Bye.